In 79 CE, almost exactly nine years after the destruction of Jerusalem, and around the same time that the New Testament Gospels were being written, Mount Vesuvius erupted, destroying the Roman city of Pompeii. This same volcano erupted again in 1944, destroying multiple cities surrounding it, and giving the modern world a glimpse of what the ancient citizens of Pompeii must have seen. Not only do we have first-hand accounts of the destruction of Pompeii, but in a cruel irony, nature has left us a perfect glimpse of the final moments of those whose lives it snuffed out early, freezing them in time as they were still grasping at the chance of survival. The ashes and debris that rained down on them created a cast that preserved their image long after their bodies had decayed. One ancient writer, Pliny the Younger, was an eyewitness to the destruction of Pompeii and he wrote about it in two letters to Tacitus. It was daylight now, elsewhere in the world, but there the darkness was darker and thicker than any night. Then came the smell of sulfur, announcing the flames and the flames themselves onto the ships, darker and denser the closer they went. Then it rained bits of pumice and rocks that were burned and shattered by the fire. Broad sheets of flame were lighting up many parts of Vesuvius, their light and brightness were the more vivid for the darkness of the night. Buildings were being rocked by a series of strong tremors and appeared to have come loose from their foundations and to be sliding this way and that. Outside, however, there was danger from the rocks that were coming down. Then came the dust, though still slightly. I looked back. We had scarcely sat down when a darkness came that was not like a moonless or cloudy night but more like the black of closed and unlighted rooms. You could hear women lamenting, children crying, men shouting. There were some so afraid of death that they prayed for death. Many raised their hands to the gods and even more believed that there were no gods any longer and that this was one last unending night for the world. I believed that I was perishing with the world and the world with me, which was a great consolation for death. Pompeii had been a city known for its beauty and wealth, but also for its revolting sexual practices. It's no wonder that some observers ascribed the destruction of the city to God's judgment. Brothels were common in Pompeii, as was sexual imagery. There were frescoes depicting a variety of sexual activity, explicitly sexual graffiti, phallic lamp shapes, and so on. Sex workers were often slaves who were both male and female, and were forced into inhumane conditions. Overall, the sex trade was vibrant in Pompeii. As a result of Pompeii's penchant for lewd sexual activity, some thought that it was destroyed by God. One ancient observer who was walking through the ruins of the city picked up a piece of charcoal and etched into a wall of rubble the words Sodom and Gomorrah, and this inscription survived until the present where it currently sits in the Naples Archaeological Museum. Likewise, a Sibylline oracle, probably written by a Jew soon after the destruction of Pompeii, attributes it to God's judgment against the Romans for destroying the Jewish temple just nine years earlier. Written in the future tense, as if it is a prophecy, it reads, An evil storm of war will also come upon Jerusalem from Italy, and it will sack the great temple of God. A leader of Rome will come who will burn the temple of Jerusalem with fire and at the same time slaughter many men and destroy the great land of the Jews. When a firebrand turned away from a cleft in the earth in the land of Italy reaches to broad heaven, it will burn many cities and destroy men. Much smoking ashes will fill the great sky and showers will fall from heaven like red earth. Know then the wrath of the heavenly God. If you liked this video, Consider subscribing to help out the channel. I regularly post videos related to the New Testament and New Testament times. Also, be sure to check out some of my previous videos dealing with interesting New Testament topics.